Hey guys, Encore Performance here. Today we will be looking at a match I played in a 3v1 where we were aiming for the achievement Masterpiece. Achievement Masterpiece has a picture of an Elite Eagle Warrior and it is known as you, you get it from beating three human players in a 3v1 with no one switching teams. We just paused at the start there for a second. We are playing on the map Amazon Tunnel, which is one of the newer ones. It's also a newer concept with a small opening, and then my opponents also have a larger opening, obviously, for their starting amount. And then a very small funnel into the middle where most of, central res where most of your resources are located. And then it splits back down again into a tunnel. And... In this game, I was playing against Canadian Conan, a familiar foe who was playing as the Ethiopians, Brooke the Butcher playing as the Bulgarians, and Savage Severo as the Persians. Savage Severo and Brooke the Butcher did go random though, so they had that against them. And we'll see how the game goes. I want to hurry up to Imperial Age as quick as possible to build my Fiortas, because most cases they're pretty useless compared to an actual eco of villagers, but when I need stone or gold in the late game, they're an excellent source for it. Especially on a map like this that has a very small amount of starting resources and things deteriorate, plus my enemies are going to have the advantage of trade, I will not. Got an alligator here, which are debated as either a reptile or an amphibian, as they require water to survive. But I don't see any water on this map. So I'm not sure what he's been living It, it is a rainforest. It is, I know it's a jungle. And our first boar lure here. That was done sloppily. I accidentally clicked on the slama. Just killing this alligator, sorry, crocodile. That way, when our villager goes up to wall, they won't have any problems. Meanwhile, a slightly unorthodox start on luring the boar over by the mill, but it works. It works for Brook the Butcher. Um, I think Savage Severo took Brook the Butcher's llamas, and she also hasn't found two. Oh, no, she has. Just hasn't used them yet. Um, one problem is we were playing on standard resources, and it looks like most of their wood was spent on the mill, and the two houses, and then onto a mining camp. So, sadly, Savage Severo has well, not enough wood for a mining camp, but he's still going to make it to Feudal Age, surprisingly. Wow. This is, this is the new build art. Opposed, opposed from that un un uh, unfortunate event, this is the new build order, guys. There we go. Looking good. And that one was flawless. We've done our first wall here, as I'd like to grab relic 1, 2, 3, 4. And seems Severo said to Lama. Oh, we even have a fifth here. So we have, if we grab this one, we have five relics compared to, I believe, they have three. Conan had a slight issue here where if we look with Fog of War, obviously he's only seen here, so he thinks this is a huge clearing, and he thought this is where he was supposed to wall, but if he had only done it there and here, sadly, this villager's just going on gold while we wait to get up to Feudal Age, then I'll stonewall this. I need time, and I'll need them to run out of gold, and then I'll hopefully be able to push out for this to work. Oh, we're still stuck on Canadian Conan. We're already in Feudal Age. Whoops, my bad. There we go. Yep. And I did not see this villager. We should have just walled them in. Just just for their peaceful containment. And this llama here. Have I seen this llama? No. If we look at what I've explored so far... I'm also not sure what's here. I don't even know this relic here till now. 
I really wish I could have snatched these three, because the trade really put me off. And we have a poor villager jammed in there. Drawing quite a bit on wood. We'll be going up to castle right away. After grabbing our market blacksmith. Castle Age. And Brook the Butcher with a crazy a crazy eco. 21 plus 31 villagers feudal age. I mean, it might work out. I think they're doing the best on their team by far so far. With a far larger eco. The only complaint I really have about them is these houses should have been built a little farther away. Otherwise, they're doing exceptionally well, considering they didn't have their starting llamas. Meanwhile, Savage Severo should be moving onto farm soon, hopefully. I think he just took a little while to get up onto wood. Canadian Conan's already starting to form one of his wood lines here. And we see... I'm bringing up my first castle. Because defense is really key till you get your Fjordas, enough of them up and going, then you can push out. Here we're going to get a second TC up. We have 9, 11, 12 on wood. 16 on food. And 4 on stone. Coming up with our first monastery, as I'd really like to grab this relic. I was very focused and not paying attention to scores. Actually, I don't even know if I had scores up. So I wasn't sure what age they were, and I was actually thought there was a castle or a large army here. And Brook the Butcher still score leading, bringing those llamas in at last. Market. Seems they forgot to put reseed farms on those, sadly. Terrible tragedy. Severo's doing good. He did lose his scout early on, so I understand some of the mishaps like this. Um, farm should probably be built around the TC, but it's working. Farm, and this one villager should be over here. This trade cart, it, I do feel it's a little too early for trade. Like, I'd want to be in castle. Well, he's in castle, never mind. And uh, we sneakily grab this relic. With three remaining, and... Two already headed back, one in our monastery, one on its way back. Right here. We click up to Imp. After putting quite a few villagers on gold. We'll delete these, because after seeing Canadian Conan's woodlands, I got rather paranoid about my own, and I some would even say I do it too early. Putting a TC here, second castle here. Finally, first castle coming up from Savage Severo, playing as the Persians, which I think is an excellent choice with the hill bonus. And we'll take a break to look at the tech trees, or civ bonuses. I have the uh, all units cost 20 less percent gold, which works very well for me. Technologies research 30% faster, ships, built, uh, ships plus 10 HP. Wait. Okay, I thought the caravel was a team bonus for a moment. I was panicking because I didn't see it. Um, my bad. Can both Fiorda and Imperial Age. And then the unique tech, the Imperial Age one, is extremely important. It's Archippus, which is basically the equivalent of Thumb Ring for gunpowder units. And it actually does speed them up slightly. The projectiles. For cannon galleons and bombard cannons, I think it's 33% quicker. So that's how they help make it more accurate, because... And Brook the Butcher seems to have the right military composition here, actually an excellent one with their um, taking advantage of the Bulgarians' long swordsmen, Sib bonus, and then skirmishers mixed in to kill enemy archers. So we'll look at Burgundians next. Sorry, Bulgarians. Whoops. Um, militia line free, that's how they already have long swordsmen, the tech. And town centers cost 50% less stone, so any castle age, that's quite a big one. Blacksmith at Siege Workshop technologies cost 50% less. I thought that was just used to be Blacksmith. That's nice. Considering, like, um, Heavy Scorpions, a thousand food to get up to it. And 
That's 500 food. Uh, and can build the creep post. I don't know if we saw any creep posts this game. Cavalry attack 33% faster. And in Imperial Age, militia line gains plus 5 armor. Which isn't even close to the equivalent of a Teutonic Knight, but still strong. And their team bonuses, blacksmiths, are quicker. I'm starting to see some production coming up from them. I felt Brooke the Butcher did good with this army. She just attacked a little bit too early before the walls were down. And they died to these castles. I really like how Savage Severo is taking advantage of, well, look, the Ethiopian team bonus, I believe. <clears throat> Towers and outposts plus three line of sight. So those outposts are having way more sight range. It's working good for them. Archers fire 18% faster. That got nerfed. Receive plus 100 food, plus 100 gold when advancing to the next age. And pikemen upgrade free. And then their unique unit, the infamous Shota Warrior, which tears down buildings. Royal Hairs, which will let them be trained nearly instantly. If you have conscription, I believe it's 1.9, 1.8 seconds. And Taurus and Engines increasing the blast radius to Siege Workshop units. Which can be completely fatal, and I would not recommend for siege monitors, as you'll just end up killing your own units. But, if you were to go mass scorpion with the Ethiopians, you would find it is a wonderful unit. It even lets you use bombard cannons on infantry. Just using this trebuchet to stop them from seeing what we're up to. We go fog of war. Um, we will, I believe, first Fjorda is up. The only bad advantage to Fjorda is it takes 20% population. Not 20%, 20 population. So, 20 villagers are more efficient than it, but you're not getting infinite gold and stone slowly. You could just see the trickle of stone coming in there. Coming up with a second. And unpacking this trebuchet just to take these buildings out. Ethiopians making advantage of the free pikemen upgrade and crossbowmen. Should get a move on with this relic. And I believe this castle is way too defensive. They should be using their early aggression, and this castle by Conan should be built right here. Sadly, halfway through this fight, Bodkin Arrow, or sorry, Bracer came in, and Brook the Butcher lost their entire army. It wasn't much, but it was something. And she's coming up with her own castle here. Meanwhile, Canadian Conan does have his infamous woodline starting. And now, I would say, is the appropriate time to start trading in Imperial Age for Savage Severo. And this really should be mining camp. I believe he has all the relics, so that was a very good play by himself. I mean, it's a team game. Why would you share with your allies? Uh, and sadly, our castle can't hit these skirmishers, but our trebuchet still can. And we have a bit of micro coming, but... Sadly, it ended up working against them with, I believe, actually, a skirmisher walked into a projectile that would have otherwise missed. See? Some nice micro. Some extremely nice micro, actually. And are they going to get the trebuchet down? And when it's on, 2 HP when this castle comes up and saves it. These probably should have a TC here, but it's all good. Looks like Conan forgot reseed farms as well. <laughs> These ecos are hugging. Um, finally, since we've seen so many crossbowmen and a few units from Savage Severo, we'll look at the Persian tech tree. And sadly... He did not make use of his Castle Age Unique tech. So while they are limited to only crossbows, these crossbows do have thumb ring. And Blacksmith, you 
don't have bracer, but you still have a crossbowman that, after getting this unique tech, costs solely wood. And if we were playing on Arabia, I'd understand the hesitation for it. But look at the map. You have infinite wood. He is going to take advantage of his bulky war elephants, it looks like, with a second castle. Again, grabbing this nice hill bonus. A few trebuchets starting to come out, and elite conics here. Interesting choice, a strong unit. Hard to counter, due to the fact that, should I say, grab this pikeman and attack it. Yes, I'll kill the conic. Then the conic drops its rider, the elite dismounted conic. That's the longest unit name in the game. Which will easily kill my pikemen in return. Coming up with our fifth castle here. And that llama is still here. See, this is what the war was over. We stole Savage Severo's llama. Well, he sent it to us. It's a treaty. Uh, yes, a peace treaty offering. And we wanted to send it back. And he got upset about it. Declared war. And he brought his allies to war with him. That must have been it. And we're starting to build our first military, a few Calvieras to go and raid. Here, I was worried they might use my signature move against me with an onager cut. So I began making a wall of outpost house, outpost house, outpost house, and so on. You'll see it continue in a moment. Coming up with another castle here. For a total of six, with a few trebuchets like this to prevent other trebuchets from taking out. That would be if they had one or two trebuchets, but they decided they should build eight. Meaning, the only way to counter these is with units, but they've got more than a great guard. And since they're three separate civilizations that do have quite different tech trees, I basically have to be building three different counters. And what's to say they won't just switch? You can see our onager prevention cutting, uh, coming along. And I wanted to strike out with my Calviers, as I believe I could see... Yes, some arbalest there, and I know Conan doesn't like to raid with a few units, and he raids, he goes big, or he gets sent back home. And Brooke the Butcher moving out at first with her six trebuchets, which are just going to take this castle down in a matter of seconds. Savage Sever bringing up his six as well. Oh no, wait, for just four? These are still... How many does she have? Oh yes, six. And then he's got four, so it's a total of ten. I'm bringing an onager in here because I managed to cut just to let my Calviers out. My onager is dealing some damage on the trebuchets, but the ones earning their keep are the Calviers. And you start to see Conan using his onagers in a very poor fashion as they begin killing many of his own arbalests, which I would not say is a worthy cause when you have halbs here. And there it is, guys. Longest name. That bird scared me for a moment. The macaw. And... Coming up. Is anybody building anything? Yes. I'm not, though. Now I am. 30 Calviers, but as you can see, our pops really starting to fill up as we have 1, 2, 3, 4, not 4, but 5 Fiordas clearing some space here with an Onager. So I want to really start pumping out some trash as I can easily afford it. Grabbing some hand cannons as well as we just got our unique tech, which will make them 100% accurate. And now we see a mostly Siege Army move out, which sadly didn't hold up as well as it was lacking the counters to my raid. Well, never mind. There, there were still some, but I believe they lost three or four trebuchets there. This was brutal. We began to build the castle just for it to go straight down. And as these castles go down, it's not just my defense falling, it's my population space. As I had really been relying on these castles for housing to deal with my fjordas. And now that these castles are going down, things are going horribly for me. We spend almost all of our gold purchasing stone there. And coming up with a castle... Which will hopefully get this housing situation under control. Though I never actually see my villagers inside the castle, just standing outside. Slama's still here. I should have been repairing this one. But I was back here. 
If we look, I'm starting to grab some more stables. I'd like to throw out some light cav, just as I'm doing here. I'm also building a lot of skirmishers, as I was expecting um, Savage Devro to go for the very strong trash archers, but he didn't. And these hand cannoneers do excellent until this elephant comes in and ruins everything. Taking out that army nearly singly handed. But, in a 200 IQ play, we convert the elephant and use it to destroy this trebuchet. And while it's close, it does succeed and manages to kill a halberdier and damage the hazar. So the monk definitely earned his keep. I love putting it in slow-mo and just watching the trebuchet fire the... Graphics they have added on it are incredible as you can see here. I think I've got more than 200 units queued up This is what the Fiorda enables And if instead of a villager with 40 HP you have a very strong building with 6,000 HP raiding becomes a lot harder <laughs> So unless your raiding force includes a large amount of saboteurs, things aren't going to go so well. And here we have some odd attack tactics by Brook the Butcher. We see a villager running in. This trebuchet should be deployed, but it's fine. This castle will get doubted anyway. And knights, they do attack 33% faster, but... They're missing their upgrades and Calvier. Meanwhile, we're really being pushed back on this side, trying to build this castle, but no villagers actually on it. I believe it's going to go down as well. Now it comes up. And it cleans most of these halberdiers, sadly not enough. And I have my garrison points, I believe, set right here. So you can see the amount of my units just running right by... Will they get free hits on them? And these elephants are the ones just soaking up the arrows, allowing the rest of you to take out these castles. And some paladins. I like these from the Persian player. Fully upgraded. They're plus two attack versus archers. Here we started to do an Andre cut the strike at the production building. Sadly, we were distracted and did not continue with it. And we are building well in Age of Empires. Unless you get mods, blood doesn't last for very long. That is... Unless you're throwing hundreds of red units away to die. You could just see the red tatters everywhere. I was not being efficient with them at all. And as you can see, my constant light cav spam has caught up to me. And we are now out of food as well. Relying only on gold. This is when I should have been playing Persians. But. And. A lot of micro mistakes. Calvary? Archers? We do see Calvier upgrade, nice. But don't endorse Calvary Archers. I like everything that has Calvary in it, but the Calvary Archers. Um like these Calviers are certainly earning their keep, along with the Conics and Light Cav I've been seeing built by Brook the Butcher. I just think Calvary Archers aren't the greatest. As you can see, Canadian Conan does have his unique tech here. And is doing very well, but also very badly, as we lost the Halberdier there. But in return, Savage Severo lost two Petards, or we'll wait. You'll see, he'll get a few shots that do not work in his favor. And this Llama is now being brought over to the other side, who's being transported by Brook the Butcher, until Canadian Conan uh, captured it. Sadly, Canadian Conan has no real love for llamas. He's just going to leave it here. And I think the one of the later games we played with this group was where Demo Ships, it was a Water Nomad, maybe, where Demo Ships played a huge role in destroying units. So I could see why someone would want to use Petards against Halberdiers, but it wasn't the greatest idea. He actually did pretty good. It's like the equivalent of a mangonel shot in the middle. Like that wasn't a terrible idea, actually. Um, considering most mangonels are going down nearly instantly, if we watch this onager is going to take a shot into here, let's say, and it's not going to, yeah, into here, where there's so many green units joining the corpses. 
and orange, like right there, that shot, that's just orange and green is all you see. And it's not the units that are the problem, it's these few trebuchets being carted in. And we throw in some arbalest as well as this had turned into a halberdier on halberdier war. And things go better for us, we've managed to push back. Over here we did cut in, but Savage Sever was quick to realize and walled and towered it. And these arbalests really earning their keep against these halberdiers, cleaning them nice and easy. Well, we just throw more halberdiers as meat shields in front. But you guys may be noticing our resources have gone from 15,000 wood. And now as we build more and more halberdiers, the number is slowly getting lower. So eventually we might have to do something about it. I know at one point when I was being pushed back here, I actually had GG typed in. I had GG well played and I decided against it i thought i'd try just a little bit longer and um hmm oh is canadian conan attempting a small cut here he is but i think he's gonna come too close to our castle see another strat by the portuguese with your fjordas is bombard towers as, of course, they're going to be way more accurate. The projectiles go 33% faster. But, and you've got the stone. But, I wanted castles for housing, so I relied on them more. So. Oh, sorry, whoops. Three times speed. And we pull these trebuchets back just in time while these arbalists take a stand with the halbs and win it. Surprisingly. And then Savage Shiver comes and fix the holes in the wall we made. It was a clever strat that would have backfired if I wasn't prepared for it. Like, it would have backfired on me for making that cut in the first place. And this is working extremely well, so we use an onager of our own to cut in, unleashing a swarm of halberdiers in, who, thank goodness, managed to get these trebuchets down before they could do too much damage to our four bombard towers. Or our production. Because right now we've got eight barrackses here. We have four here, three here, and stables we have eight here, and ten here with three units trapped back there. Here we try and make a push against it, but I don't realize this is walled with the hills, it doesn't look like it. And we are making a slow push back here, as it was that slight change, just a few arbalests throwing in there really helped. And I should be going for more gold units now that I can afford it. And I just am starting with the light organ guns. And a few hand cannoneers from this building. I wanted to wait a little bit longer and do one big push. And you can see the trash being queued up, guys. It's a slaughter. Meanwhile, they're sending in many of their own units as well. And sadly, sometime during the fighting, I missed it in this video, but... The llama came up to one of my units while I went to kill it, but before I could kill it, Canadians, Conan's, Onagers did it for me. And this castle comes up, but then sadly is going to go straight back down. You can see we're building the organ guns here. Slow it down a bit. Back here, we're building a very large amount of hand cannoneers. My hopes was for a large gold intensive army that could drive them back. And once I lure enough units in with the castle support and my organ guns, I quickly push out, and they do extremely well. These hand cannoneers show up, and they push this entire force back. So far, we haven't lost any of our organ guns, just had a few damaged. With a few um, light cannoneers to deal with skirmishers, we do good. The trebuchet did snipe one, and then a trebuchet here sniped another. Pushing forward with this force. And this trebuchet will probably get one, because that's trebuchets do do well from a distance. Yep, uh, 16. These organ guns are holding. We've queued up a lot more hand cannoneers, as you can see. And more organ guns somewhere. More hand cannoneers coming. And if you get enough of a just gold square like this, like gold units, it does incredibly well to the fact that units can't even come to touch it. So we have... 42 hand cannoneers. 
Uh, 15 Oregon guns, 3 trebuchets, that's 60 gold intensive units that have very high attack. And the gunpowder ones have 100% accuracy unless you micro with your units. Then the 3 trebuchets are just tearing down buildings. As we're pushing forward, sadly they are making the mistake of not rebuilding their production buildings as they come down. But Conan's about to prove me wrong on that. If we look, their trade is up and going. I would say it's good. It's I would consider it mediocre. I think I completely understand why it never got off to a better start with the situation they were in, but it could be better. Um, not could be better. It you'd aim for it to be better, and even throwing in some champions to deal with his own halberdiers, and this force really starts pushing back, wrecking some havoc. These units coming through here. Two villagers coming through. Is this going to be a sneak? Nope, they're walling right here. Not a gate. We're even starting to throw some Calviers. So I'm basically pulling what they did to me at the start, which is building so many different units that there's no real way to counter it. And when you mass Oregon guns, I feel the only counter is mass siege, but I was hoping to... I was hoping that they would get overwhelmed and build, continue with their trash spam. And I might be wrong on this, but I think the best way to counter hand cannoneers is skirmishers. But of course, skirmishers die to organ guns. And then a hand cannoneer is 7 range. If we look at a onager, surely there's one somewhere. I do know an onager has more range, but a hand cannoneer deals 17 attack with 100% accuracy. Like a volley of a few hand cannoneers will just tear an onager down. Bringing this in here to help tear some stuff down. Some forward castles grabbing these hills. Meanwhile, uh, two paladins in here. Um, this being built here. I think we will redo this again another time. And they'll choose their teams. And Brook the Butcher decides it's time to resign and it's game over. Alright, well played. I'm not sure. I could see why they resigned. And I probably would have won at this point, but you never know. Um, considering Canadian Conan Savage ever do hold on for a while longer. I wanted to kill these villagers before they could try and escape anywhere. And I really wanted to prioritize delete, uh, destroying these production buildings because they just kept pumping up more and more units. And I wasn't aware of this one for a while. We've just got these villagers repairing this one trebuchet. And our organ gun numbers have really fallen. But now we've got so many hand cannoneers mixed in here. With some skirmishers. Some calviers. Some champions. How I was literally going to every building I had. And just clicking every hotkey. Just spam attacking my keyboard. And this p is going to have no real use. Are you still walking off? This one's going to come here. And Conan's two defensive castles, well, one now, or no, still two, are going to slow us down. But if they had been forward, it might have helped them out a bit better. Meanwhile, Savage Sever begins an onager cut of his own. Uh, yeah, Siege Onagers, I think, have nine damage. This has 8, or sorry, 9 range. With a range of 7, these are easier to micro. They deal 17 attack. You need 4 hits on an onager. So, hand cannoneers do, do decent if you have them in stagger, which I was trying, but they were... It, it was hard to keep some organization in a state like this. We have over 60 now. Quite a few trebs. 7. More hand cannoneers coming in. You can see... Some of everything. I just wanted a bit of variety. And I bring one hand cannon here, here. Who slowly starts taking out this paladin. We kill the villager with a organ gun. Meaning this stables now. It can still build units. But it'll be the only one building here. And I start coming through here. And I realize. Wait 
Wait a minute, this is an Onger cut. I think I actually chat about it. I might have already. <laughs> I sue copyright. Uh, and over here, one crazy Hazar last charge from Canadian Conan. Does well. But I pull up, I think, just this army and it deals with the rest of it. I was impressed with this, though. Savage Chevros resigned. I'm just grabbing all of the units I have because if you see they're scattered all over the place. And trying to fight off this last Hazar attack and then push out one last time. And was... Did he resign or was he defeated? Yeah, and then Canadian Conan resigns. It's very well played by them. I just thought this was a fun sort of bit to do. And one slightly stronger player, versus that skirmisher me confused, versus three slightly weaker. And we could do newer things like laying them choose sieves, because, well, they chose to go random, but I think they were being nice on that if they chose their best strongest sieves. And then we could do, they could play broken sieves like the Burgundians or Sicilians, because those two team, I know, like the Sicilian um, unique techs could have made... Each team member receives a one-time payment of 15 gold for each military unit they owned. At one point, I'm going to say they owned all at least 150, 100. That would have been crazy good for them. And, uh, and then the relics generate food and gold for the Burgundians, and food generate gold for them. It would also be really good. If you go to look at statistics, I do have the most units killed. I also have the most units lost, but if we look at the units I killed to the units they lost, it doesn't add up fully. There's actually around 300 to 400 units missing that aren't accounted for, and that's Canadian Conan's auditors. And Canadian Conan takes MVP, even though in the early game I would have argued it was Brick the Butcher or Savage Sever, but in the end I would agree. Units converted was only one by me. Buildings raised 123. Um, largest army, 259. Like, if you look at their largest armies of those that all been at the same time, and then they got the 15 gold for each unit, would have been a massive game changer. Best trade profit by Canadian Conan. That's well done on him. Brooke the Butcher donated... 9,000 resources, I guess, when she resigned. And Savage Shiver gave her 200. At some point. Um, fastest up times, you really have to be fast with this. We, I love the map Amazon Tunnel, because we had tried it before in Black Forest, and it was not even close to as easy, because you have to watch several areas, and they've got way more map control. Whereas this evened it out a bit more, made it a bit fairer. Total castles, 23 castles. Villager Hive, 88. Five relics. Savage Ever did have three. They were just gone at the end. And timeline is chaotic. And right there is where I had GG well played tight in. And I thought, I'll try a little longer. I'll do one last gold push. And I built a few champions. I realized, hey, that was pretty easy. I built a few herbalists. I said, hey, that's working. And then I went on from there to win. So it was a very well played by them. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you next time.